Hi and hello everyone. Uh, what we were seeing so far is uh, the closed Jackson network or garden naval network. We have seen the basic theory and how it is different or how one can analyze that based upon our analysis of open Jackson network that we have done earlier and we have seen an example. Uh, in that example, one thing I just want to point out here is uh, this particular point, right. If you look at here, the traffic equation is given by this, right, in terms of rho i, but now uh, it may be a little uh, or awkward to use the same rho i because we have been using this rho i for denoting the, you know, utilization factors. In this form, if you directly look at everything like you know properly like it will, it may be of that, but you know here it is not exactly equal to rho i of the actual utilization of the thing, but it is relative to that because we are setting for example, in this particular case rho 1 equal to 1 we are setting, okay. We know that uh, you know that may not be the case here uh, in general for any network, but you know the rho 2 then we are obtaining in terms of that. Suppose if you set you know rho 2 equal to 1 then rho 1 would be some other value, right. So, it is relative, right. So, this this relative thing will be taken care when actually you are computing in the, in the G of m uh, when, when you actually computing this probability like it will not make a difference. But uh, if you want to interpret this rho as the actual utilization that is not correct. So, it can be uh, less than 1 or more than 1 yeah, as you can see from here for example, for certain values of p, q, mu 1, mu 2 like this may even be more than 1 or less than 1, but what we are saying is we are it is just relative to this 1 we are which we are fixing it, right. That is that you have to keep remember. So, this is not really the actual throughput or actual utilization I mean throughput in the sense lambda i's corresponding ones. But this is the relative utilization is what this rho i. So, do not never interpret that as uh, as such is the actual. So, that is why in some books like they use a different notation for this rho i rather than using rho i as we are using it here. But you know from the context for closed queuing network you just have to keep this in mind that this is not actually the actual utilization, but it is a relative utilization is what we are having it here. Okay. Let us look at one more example here which is basically what we have in the text as well which is uh, the two machine three node closed queuing network because this example this uh, the example that we are going to see is going to come again and again. So, just pay attention to this because the remaining complete portion whether this uh, algorithm that we are going to introduce we are going to come back to this example only and we are going to talk about its implementation aspects. Okay. So, that is why like, this this particular example is simple. The previous one we have given because in a simple node situation like you know you may have more different uh, uh, right. So, for example, this particular network that we have this is a single server queues. So, for single server one can have much more quite neat results for various other quantities like what we have had here for example, these kind of quantities that we have had you can write more. But for in general, it may be difficult to give that, but our concern is only obtaining the joint distribution. So, we will confine to that. So, here let us look at here, this is we call it as a two machine three node closed Jackson network or garden naval network. So, assume that there are two machines which are in operating conditions and they need to be maintained in that operating condition at all times. Okay. So, they work for a duration of an exponential, you know they are in working condition for a duration of a, which is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, after that they fail and call this operating node as node 1. Okay. So, there are two machines here which are there in operating, each of them independently works for a duration exponentially distributed duration with parameter lambda. Now, upon failure a machine has a probability of R12 of being repaired locally. So, this local repair facility you call it as node 2 which has a single repairment and repair time follows exponential with parameter mu 2 and when a machine fails it can move it can be repaired locally with this probability okay, if it goes here or it must be repaired by the 
again single specialist which is what this specialist node is what we call it as node 3 with the remaining probability like so who works according to exponential mu 3 distribution. Now it may be possible that after repair being done locally the machine may require specialist attention as well and that happens with probability r 2 3 or after local repair it will return to uh, operation in operating node which is node 1 with probability 1 minus r 2 3. But after a special service sub, uh, completion then it will always return to operation. So, it is r 3 1 is 1. So, what we have here we have 3 node there are 2 machines I mean 2 number of customers is what quickly. So, either both may be in working condition or both may be failed condition with either node 2 or node 3 or one may be working, one may be failed or both may be failed all possibilities are there and at node 1 there are 2 serv the servers basically here are the machines. So, there are C 1 equal to 2, but C 2 and C 3 are 1 each in the remaining one. Okay. So, mu 1 here is actually lambda. So, if you depict this uh, you know diagrammatically, so you have really in node 1 you have 2 machines which are working condition which is with rate lambda it will fail. Now, once it fails with probability R 1 2 it go to node 2 which will take you know an exponential amount of time for the local repair then after which either it can move to node 3 for specialist repair which will happen with probability mu 3 or it can come to operating node with 1 minus R 2 3. Similarly, from here it can from once a machine fails it can also go for specialist repair with this probability. But after repairing in the specialist uh, repair facility, the machine will come to operating condition. So, this is with probability 1, you know, you have this node. So, this is what we had here. Really, like there is no queuing happens here just for the completion sake, we have put this. But as you see, there are 2 servers are at maximum of 2, uh, what you call it, 2 servers are there and 2 machines only, 2 customers only. So, both can be accommodated here. Whereas, here, there could be a possibility that one is being repaired the other is waiting for repair one is being repaired other is waiting for the repair but here it will be both so there is actually there is no queue right but you know, we are just depicting it because we are allowing it no problem but there is no, no queue happens there actually right this is what is the model now what we have to do the steady state joint probability distribution is essentially this because 1 over g of 2 g of 2 is the normalization constant and this is corresponding to the first node which is mm2. So, for mm2 the, the factor will come in is this rho 1 to the power n1 divided by a1 of n1 where a1 of n1 is 1 for 0 and 1 for 2 specialized ones a1 of 2 equal to 2. So, if you specialize to 2 uh, customer in the, the network this is what will happen with the 2 servers and wrote the for the other 2 nodes are single server you will have the corresponding factors here. So, this is G 2 will will take care of all the total possibilities. Okay. So, we must find rho i now from this set of traffic equations and here the routing matrix is this as we have described right from node 1 it will go to node 2 with probability r 1 2 or node 3 with probability r 1 2. From node 2 it will go to either node 1 with this probability or node 3 with this probability. From node 3 it will go to always node 1 which is with this probability 1. So, this is what is the routing matrix you just have to write down the routing matrix corresponding to that. Then this equation right would be set of these 3 equations right. We know this equation are linearly dependent. So, we have to set uh, one of them equal. So, we for conveniently we set rho 2 equal to 1. Okay. Now, if rho 2 equal to 1 then from this equation then rho 1 is simply mu 2 over lambda by uh, lambda times r 1 2 is what you will get here as rho 1. Now, you put rho 1 rho 2 in the third equation right. So, rho 1 and rho 2 rho 1 and rho 2 in the third equation. So, you will get this as the uh, rho 3 which is equal to this which can be simplified to this. So, this is what is the expression for 
this row 1 row 2 row 3 remember like this row 1 row 2 row 3 need not be less than 1 it can be more than 1 or greater than 1 or any value it can take that is what you know it will come out to be because there is no guarantee that it might come ok. So, once we have this then we have the steady state solution of the closed network which is given by this where g of n can be obtained by summing over this quantity over all cases for which n1 plus n2 plus n3 equal to 2 because there are total 2 customers overall in the network. So, there are 6 cases possible here which is either both uh, will be there in node 1 or node 2 or node 3 or 1 each in node 1 and 2, 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 right. So, these are the cases. Now, like if I evaluate this quantities for each of these cases and I sum it up uh, to express what is going to be my g of n here. So, I can obtain the normalization condition appropriately right. So, that is how you handle this right. So, you have for this network. Now, for illustration purpose for you know for easy understanding and then going forward as well. So, let us take some specific values for the parameters lambda equal to 2, mu 2 equal to 1, mu 3 equal to 3, r 1 2 is 3 fourth, r 2 3 is 1 third. So, 1 minus r 1 2 is 1 fourth and 1 minus r 2 3 is you know 2 third that is comes automatically because as you see here we said that this matrix will be a stochastic matrix for the closed network this must be a stochastic matrix that you have to remember. Then since we have already obtained row 2 equal to 1, row 1 is this, row 3 equal to this which gave you this. Now, if I substitute all these values that I have here, then it boils down to this where a 1 of n 1 as we have said here is 1 that a 1 of 0 is 1, a 1 of 1 is 1 and a 1 of 2 is 2. That is what are the 3 quantities that you have depending upon what is the value of n 1 here, right. So, and n2 of course, so this is what you know once you get that you will get the thing. So, now g2 you can compute in a naive computation manner like for each possible values because you have different states right 2 0 0 that will give you this term, this is 0 2 0, this is 0 0 2, this term is 1 1 0, this term is 1 0 1 and this term is corresponding to 0 1 1. So, you can compute for each of this to get the sum. So, if you plug it here then you have determined completely the distribution of this. Now, if I compute for each of these 6 states that are possible this is what is turning out to be the corresponding joint probability distribution that you have here. Now, once I have this joint probability distribution now like if I want to marginals I can obtain if I want uh, you know other quantities whatever I re required with respect to this I can obtain from this distribution. So, once we obtain this distribution then marginals, mean number in the system everything can be obtained uh, from this and ok. But there are certain facts I mean if these were the parameter values then there are certain facts that you know you need to look at with respect to the values as you always look at right. You see here this probability is very low which means that only about 10 percent less than 10 percent of the time both the machines are in working condition right. And about you know 43 percent of the time the, the machines are in with local repair right. There is only one repairment, but this much it is there I mean with state 0 to 0 which means both the machines are at local repair. So, there must be something you need to do with respect to this. This is the kind of insights that you know you have to do where there is a problem and so on if you want to look at it you can look at from here. So, the here there is not much problem because much less is going here, but that might be possible because you know of this 3 by 4 that is why you know it is getting clogged here right the system is getting clogged here in a way right. Uh, but if this is de decreased then possibly this will decrease and this might be increased. But so, you can balance out and you see how it is going on and this also tells you that you know the problem with node 2 right wherever that is there you have this higher probabilities right. So, that is your 
and at least one machine available if you want to look at it just 45 percent of the time. So, about 55 percent of the time you know it not even one machine is in operation. So, performance if these were the parameter values is not up to the mark and you have to decide now how to improve. Okay? So, this is with respect to this particular values, but the what we are looking at is that how we are getting this and how we are implementing this. right? So, that is uh, what then you are obtaining it here uh, with respect to this particular example that we have here. Okay, fine. So, this is what is done. this example we will keep uh, you know coming back and remember you know this particular uh, slide where we have the distribution as well as the probabilities given. So, this part is what then we will come back again and again. Okay, fine. Now, in, in the previous example because it was two node the computation of uh, the normalization constant which is basically this g of n was relatively easier. In this case as well because there are two uh, customers only and even though there are three nodes things were not that difficult a naive computation can give easily. But in practice this is not that easy to compute. The main computational difficulty when you are trying to you know uh, obtain the joint distribution of the number in the system in the whole network is connected with the evaluation of this g of n. Okay. Up to this the process is the same. Now, g of n is this way of evaluating by enumerating all such possibilities. Here it so happened that n1 plus n2 plus n3 equal to 2, it gave right to only 6 states. So, you can evaluate all 6 states what is going to be and then you can compute this g2 directly. right? But it may not be that simple in general. So, since the joint probability distribution determined in terms of this normalization constant g of n here, okay, we generally use the notation n g of n. So, in the examples that we have considered this naive brute force approach of calculating was easy, but that is not the case in general. For example, for large n and k mainly the number of customers are large and also number of nodes then there are many possible ways in which uh, one can allocate this n customers among the k nodes. Actually, it is n plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1 ways which is roughly of the order n to the power k minus 1. So, you can imagine if n is large or k is large what would be the number of states that might come. And also these calculations are prone to numerical errors accumulating uh, numerical errors as well. So, people were looking for an efficient way of computing this g of n because this is what is the main crux this uh, you know once you compute g of n after solving the traffic equation once you you are basically determine rho 1 rho 2 this is as we said that is relative utilization it is not the actual utilization. But once you computed that rho 1 rho 2 and so on rho k then it was only the question of how to compute this g of n how do we compute this efficient way. One such algorithm was given by Buzen in 1973, so which is an it turns out to be an efficient algorithm to compute g of n, but it does use a recursive scheme to compute this g of n. Uh, in a single server case, you can easily see that it is performing that n k multiplication and n k addition. So, you can see how much you know improvement that can make. Again, we stress that it is very useful for larger values, smaller networks, smaller values of n and k we have seen that it can be done very easily, it is not very complex, but for large network this is. So, what is this algorithm is that is what you know we will see how we can compute this g of n. Okay. So, let us call this factor which is the product factor, the in the product form solution whatever is the product term let that factor be called as f i of n i. So, here we are writing it for gen in general for a multi server case. If you specialize this algorithm to single server case, then you know you can get some more expression, some more neat results as well for, for certain performance quantities of uh, interest as well. Okay. But since that was not our interest mainly, so we restrict ourselves to I mean are we 
take it in the in the generality of multi server case. So, we retain this factor. By the way, this algorithm is also called as this convolution algorithm okay, because the factor coming out is basically convolution form it will come into this case. So, we know this f i of n i is this where a i of n i either this or this which is what you know we have seen the simple example as well. Now, once we write this then the normalization constant is basically you can write as summation of this such that f1 of n1 into f1 of uh, f2 of n2 and so on which is what this product is right so that's what is the normalization condition now what you do you define an auxiliary function which is gmn okay now if what is that you look at this function carefully and compare with this what does it mean here it is summation of n1 plus n2 plus nm which is equal to n and product of i is equal to 1 to m fi of ni which is basically you can see here what is that you have k nodes and total of n customers here. So, here you can think of this as m nodes and n customers ok that is what this function give you this auxiliary function g m n is a quantity which is similar to this g of n which is for k nodes and n customer here which is this is m nodes and n customer is what you have. So, that is what we are writing it here this is m nodes and within bracket is number of customers just like here we have writing it as number of customers as within bracket for capital G m. Now, if I put this m as k so the, the sum will be up to n uh, plus n k and which is equal to capital N then I will get back this g of n. So, basically in this auxiliary function if I take g k of capital N then that is what is going to give me this g of n right. So, I am defining this auxiliary function and for particular values of m and n if I take that is k and n then I am going to get back or I am going to get what I wanted to compute which is the normalization constant. Now, what we will do is that we will the algorithm is basically aims at computation of this in a recursive way. So, that is a scheme that we have to uh, figure out what is the recursive scheme that we can have ok. So, take this g m of n as we defined here ok. Now, take the, the last one this n m you fix it to be some value i ok. You can fix it at some value i. So, I can change the product from j from here because I am fixing that i there then what will happen to this sum? So, this is summation of n 1 plus n 2 plus n of m minus 1 plus that n m I am fixing it as i this is all equal to cap small n and the product is j to 1 to m of f j of n j right that is what I will have. Now, since I am fixing this i ok and this i could be anything between 0 and n right. So, so all possibilities I have to write it right. So, if I fix this i then that is what you have here then what I can do so that means I can take out the the mth quantity from here I can write it outside that will be f m of i the remaining product will be j equal to 1 to m minus 1 of f j n j and the sum of n 1 plus m 2 n m minus 1 would be equal to n minus i because i you have assumed it to be in the mth, uh, mth node right you have m totally this is m nodes n customer out of which if I allocate i customers to the mth node the remaining n minus i customers will be there with between the remaining m minus 1 nodes and that is what will give you this. Now, this quantity the one which is in this bracket is basically g of m minus 1 of n minus i customer. So, which is in m minus 1 nodes n minus i customer if I have this quantity g m n this is what you have here. So, basically what I have g m of n ok is basically i is equal to 0 to n of f m i and g m minus 1 of n minus i ok. Now, from this we can observe that g 1 when there is only one node this n would be exactly same as f 1 n for all 0 to n and g m of 0 right if there is 0 customer then this function is 1 for all 1 to k this is the starting condition for the algorithms ok. So, this is the 
starting condition for algorithms. Now, once I have this as the starting condition, right? G m of 0 I know and G 1 I have. Now, once I have G 1 here, then G 2, G 2 of n, right? G 2 of n would involve, so G 1 of n I am giving com completely here, right? So, that is with one node what would happen is basically F 1 of n. There is nothing peculiar or great about that. And once I know all G 1 for all uh, points 0, 1, 2 up to n for all number of customers basically, if it is in one node what would be this quantity? Then G 2 of n, G 2 of n if I look at it, if I see that this will be int of G 1 of something right n minus i. If I fix i here then n minus i is what you get. So, G 2 would be in terms of G 1 then G 3 will be in terms of G 2 and G 4 will be in terms of G 3. So, you, you compute this recursively using this recursive relationship right. So, this if you go and the algorithm will terminate when you reach with k nodes right because you have k nodes is what you have it in mind. So, starting from g 1, g 2, g 3 and you keep continuing to compute up to g k and once you get that then your algorithm will terminate and you can obtain the quantity here. Okay. So, this way of computation is very efficient for large networks as one can see, but you know we will see simple example only where you may not really see the power or utility of this algorithm. But in practice, uh, this is quite useful for large networks and there is nothing like one node to one customer to customer network which is much easier to even observe. You do not really need a lot of whole stuff of this kind of queuing analysis to be done okay. and only when you have large number of system that you have here. Now, in addition, these functions also helps us in calculating the marginal distributions as well. So, say for example, if I want the marginal distribution of the ith node which is this, now let us call si to be this sum without this ith term in the middle, right. The rest of all n i is what you denote it by si, okay. Then p i of n if I want, then I will take this joint and I have to you know uh, look at sum over all remaining possibilities right n 1, n 2, n i minus 1 and n i plus 1 and n k they are sum equal to n minus n right is, is what is a possibility I have to enumerate to get p i of n. So, this one is essentially this one I can write straight away, but the sum is now. So, the S i notation we are utilized just because you know we do not want to write this long expression here. So, we are using the notation S i that is all. Now, in this if I take the you know the ith one out right because uh, I am keeping this ith one only out then I will get this as the expression right I could have even written here j without much does not matter right. So, this is f i of n the ith one if I take it out then j not equal to i I will get the remaining ones here ok. In general this quality is little cumbersome to compute, but conveniently if I take the the last node that is for node k, this expression is very simple that you know because then you can write instead of j not equal to i this will be only the last one you are leaving it out. So, it will be like this. So, that can be written easily as g k minus 1 of n minus n. So, one can write for the kth node this as the quantity, but if you want to find other marginals one way is to permute the nodes so that the whatever the node that at which you want to compute the, the marginal distribution becomes node k. But if you want that every other node then that becomes difficult because this involves some modifications of to the function gmn as well because once you change the node things also will change in this as well ok. If only one marginal distribution then you can set that as the last node and then you can do the computation. But if I want more than that, then this way of doing it would be difficult, but there are efficient ways, but you know we are not getting into that. So, but there are efficient ways even with, with little modification to this uh, process that one can get the marginals. But what is the crux here or what is the thing that you are taking away from here is that this 
quantities the auxiliary functions that we defined in the in the convolution algorithm or Bhujan's algorithm also helps us to compute the marginal distribution that is what you know you have to take ok. Fine, now let us see how this algorithm can be implemented for the example that we just uh, did the 2 machine 3 node model ok. 2 machine 3 node closed network the illustration part we are revisiting. So, first we have to find the factors f i of n i we have defined f i of n i to be this quantity. So, we have now like all these things all these parameters values are there and we know what are these quantities. So, this is what is this uh, quantities that you may have in general right. So, this is f 1 of 0 we just have to plug in the values there and see that this computation and because my I set row 2 equal to 1 and row 1 I obtained in terms of row 2 and row 3 you obtained in terms of this. This will play a role in determining what are that quantities that uh, you know row 2 to the power n, n 1, n 3, and n 2 and, and so on right. So, from there I can obtain f 1 of 0, f 1 of 1, f 1 of 2 this is the uh, for the function f 1 of n 1 similarly f 2 of 0, f 2 of 1, f 2 of 2 because 0, 1, 2 are the number of customers that is possible here. Now, f 3 of 0, f 3 of 1, f 3 of 2 you can obtain it. So, once you obtain this then your algorithms can start. Now, if I look at because you know in this algorithm that this is required for all values of uh, this i if you want recursively m for each m you want and also for each m for all i's you want. So, that is what you know the starting you have to compute before you then you initialize to this value then apply the recursive step that is all you would do ok. So, the recursive step since you, you, you can directly go to what you wanted to get the we wanted to get g 2 which in this case would be given by g 3 of 2 right. Now, you know g 3 of 2 would involve f 3 and g 2 right. So, f 3 of i g 2 of 2 minus i which i is equal to 0 to 2 here because there are customers, customers is number of customers is 2 here. So, this is 2 fine. So, this is what you have here. So, that means i is equal to 0. So, f 3 of 0 g 2 of 2 plus f 3 of 1 g 2 of 1 plus f 3 of 2 g 2 of 0 right. I have already obtained this f function. Now, what I need to know? I need to compute because I know that g 3 will be in terms of g 2. So, g 2 of 0, g 2 of 1, g 2 of 2 I need to compute. g 2 of 0 anyway we know from the initial condition uh, g 2 of 1 and g 2 of 2. So, g 2 of 1 uh, but the now it is g 2 of 1. So, this will be in terms of f 2 and g 1. So, f 2 of 0 g 1 of 1, f 2 of 1 g 1 of 0 and g 2 of 2 will be 3 terms like in, in this particular case right like what we have it here, here also you will have 3 terms here. And the starting condition as we know is g 1 of 0 which is also f 1 of 0 equal to 1 ok. So, what you have here g 1 of n is f 1 of n and g m of 0 is 1 right. So, g m of 0 is 1 for m 1 2 3 and g 1 of n is basically f 1 of n. So, f 1 is basically 0 1 2 so accordingly g 1. So, g 1 you will get from the starting condition g m 0 you will get from starting condition then once you get g 1 then g 2 recursively you compute for g 2 then you compute for g 3 and so on ok. So, if you do the calculation now. So, you can go reverse g 2 of 1 is this just have to plug in the value g 2 of 1 is f 2 of 0 g 1 of 1 g 1 of 1 is 2 by 3 f 2 of 0 is 1. So, you get 1 into 2 by 3 plus 1 into 1 which is 5 by 3 and similarly for g 2 of 2 you have these 3 terms f 2 of 0 which is again 1 and g 1 of 2 right g 1 of 2 is 2 by 9. So, the first term will be 1 into 2 by 9 plus this plus this. So, it will give you 17 by 9 and once I have these 2 then I can plug in here because g 2 of 0 I am getting it from here. So, g 2 of 1 and g 2 of 2 I can get from here I can substitute here to get my g 3 of 2 which will give me this is effect 
effectively equal to my the what of quantity that you are looking for which is g of 2 right. You remember this is what we had obtained earlier also when uh, uh, we did the computation right naive computation here ok. This is a very simple example with the two customers. So, the algorithm did may not have helped to get lesser number of uh, computations it is just that illustration of the algorithm how it works, but the efficiency will be evident when you consider very large networks ok. Now, let us the tabular form we have kept it here just uh, for easy reference and understanding of how this algorithm works ok. So, this the first column is what is given by g 1 of n right this is the one g 1 of n is what is given by the first column this is given by the initial condition right which is equal to simply f 1 of n once you compute that then you will get this one. Similarly, this one g m of 0 will give you this first row which is also coming from the initial condition then the rest of the table you have to start filling ok. Now, you know that this 5 by 3 if I look at here it is here it involved this 2 by 3 and 1 which are basically these two quantities. So, these two quantities will determine this and for determining this all these three quantities determine this ok. If I have more right then these four would determine this fourth quantity fifth quantity if I have this all five quantities will determine the fifth quantity here if I have something more. But this first column first row will given by the starting condition then you have to start filling these elements one by one by computing with this. So, you have to multiply this appropriately right. So, this is as you see here right this one is multiplied by with this one and this 2 by 3 is multiplied with this uh, one right that is what you know that that is coming from the other ones uh, f f function f 2 function right. So, that is what you get here. So, basically how you will fill it up you will have this you will have this to start with then you start with this involving these two and the corresponding f these three these three and the f like this you know you will start filling up this table once you get this then you will get this column and this column. Remember here we need not compute this right if, if our final objective is to compute the, the last element which is the g of n at least for the last column you need not compute the intermediate values, but the last one directly you can use all the previous column value then you can compute this that is what pretty much we have done. But this column also this entry also we have computed in this particular case and we have plugged it here. The reason that you know you if it is good that you have the complete table is that the performance measures are if for example, if this are a single server network I mean you can write down any nice expressions for the utilizations and other performance measures throughput and other performance measures everything in terms of these m's. Recall in one of the previous example we wrote certain probability as g m minus 1 by g m sort of thing right. right. So, this is sort of your g m g n and this is sort of your g n minus n n minus 1 right. So, that is what in such situations these entries may be of some help, but if your interest is only the final entry from the previous column you can directly get here and then you can stop as we have computed here ok. So, this is what is the algorithm and how one can work it out. Now, once I compute so this is basically the, the convolution algorithm or the Bosons algorithm is only for computation of this normalization constant which will be plugged now into the your usual expression for the joint probability distribution and once we have the probability distribution then you can get the other performance measures of interest right. So, go back like you know if you have seen this is what this is what we are computing it through that algorithm rather than computing it in this manner. Now, once you plug it here then this expression will give you these probabilities and then further things will go further. So, that is what you know you have it here of course, a little bit more can be said if it is everything is single server or just specific cases, but you know our objective was to introduce this algorithm in computations. So, that you know you can if you want to understand more that you can explore yourself uh, from the from here from uh, from this point onwards ok. 
we will stop here and then we will come back with another algorithm in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.